Welcome to episode one of the OrthoCast. Thank you to my friend in Discord for coming up for that name. I thought of lots of different names, you know, OrthoBro Podcast, uh, Orthodox Zoomer Podcast, but I'm happy with this name. Today I have my guest, John, the very first guest, and my friend, I think he's very entertaining. And since he's the first guest ever, I got him a gift. I got him the Matt Frad Saint the Herman. Catholic special? Yeah, the Hold Catholic on, you special. mean this this very Catholic saint of Saint Herman of Alaska? Yes, My Saint goodness. Herman of Alaska. Well, I uh Wow. This will make me reconsider the filio quiz. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Kyle. No, but in all seriousness, um yeah, this is yeah. awesome. Uh, go go Saint Herman. Yeah. Pray for us. Saint Herman of Alaska pray for us. Yeah, yeah thank you. And then That's another great. announcement is I am currently working on merch. This is I got a mug in the in the in the mix, and I've got lots more coming, and I will show you that. But yes, merch coming soon. Um, so first, John, let's I, talk this about is, this. Is big. I feel yeah. like this is this is my big interview. Yeah. yeah. So John, let's talk about the ortho bro question. Okay. What what's an ortho bro? Is there is this a bad thing? Is this a good thing? What has your experience been? Is it just a bunch of guys? Is it? Um, exclusive in orthodoxy, or is it for everyone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, this is a great question. Yeah. I never thought that I'd be asked this question, and I'm really <laughs> glad that I get to yeah. share my opinions on this. Yeah. Um, so, at first, when I first heard, heard uh, the term ortho bro, I was thinking, oh, that's great. Like, you know, I don't mind being identified as a bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, bro. You know, uh, I started uh, attending orthodox liturgies. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe a little bit less, and uh, so yeah, like that's when I first started hearing yeah. that term. So you heard it at liturgy first, or um, online? Well, just among my friends that yeah. I met at liturgy uh -huh. and, and Bible study. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it was like it was like an Orthodox Brotherhood, you know? Yeah. We were like you know, the Ortho Bros, like we're getting together for Orthodox Bible study, and yeah. we're bros, and we can like we can have a beer, we can you know we can talk about. Uh, the patristic writings. We yeah. Talk about you know um, our our uh, different backgrounds and how we came to orthodoxy. So yeah. it was like a good thing. Yeah. Um, but as time has gone on, however, um, I think with me becoming more familiar with online orthodoxy. Yeah. Um, because I am unfortunately like many people terminally online, <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. So you do a lot of interaction and you uh, learn a lot that way from from people in the orthodox world online. You know, like yourself, mm, and um, yeah, yeah, and so you know, it just sometimes there are unsavory characters, people who mm -hmm. convert to orthodoxy, and then they think that they're like some sort of, uh, um, like you would think that it'd be more of a Catholic thing, but they become like uh, the Inquisition. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? They're, they're like yeah. they try to like stamp out heresy, and they're like, well, actually, if you read the yeah. Council of blah blah blah. Like five thousand blah blah blah. You're yeah, like, I'm like trying to apply these canons when they're a new convert. Yeah, though, so. exactly. I'm yeah, that, and that's why I've stepped away from that kind of stuff or taken a step back a little bit, just because like I don't, I need to like grow. Yeah, in my orthodoxy before I even like dive in mm -hmm. too deep on uh, certain writings. Yeah, no, I think that's a really important thing to take your time when coming to orthodoxy. It isn't just something that you do overnight. It's really like a lifelong process. And like, even though we're both members of the church, it's like, there's so much you still need to learn. And that's why humility is such a important part of being orthodoxy. But, you know, speaking of online, you know, there was that NPR article that came out, you know, a few months ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That, Who could forget? Yeah. Like they, these people talk about how it's bad to generalize people, but then they generalize all of orthodox converts as like Putin worshipers and uh, evil like, uh, white white nationalists. Yeah, yeah. The, so, I think that the biggest link there that they were trying to make is white nationalism in Orthodox. Yeah, that's which, so, that's the only reason anyone converts. Which not yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah I I mean you go to a Antiochian parish. Let me tell you, I just all those brown <laughs> people they love white pride. Yeah, they, they love it. They just they can't stop talking about it. No, but in in all seriousness, it was it's a very strange feeling, right? To um, to like embrace a uh i mean so for us i think that you and i feel like we're embracing the truth right we're yeah embracing the that's truth. that's why we came because if, if history does, it doesn't matter that that's why we came yeah Orthodox. right and it's um it's something like eternal and universal for, yeah. for all people um and it's interesting that they're trying to attach 
this sort of uh, like ethnic nationalism, factionalism, political sort of stuff to the church, whereas um, it's really them who has now uh, segmented like orthodoxy as as the other. Right, yeah. they're the ones. Yeah, they're the they're the they're, they're the ones that excluding. are excluding. Yeah, yeah, they're being they're, exclusionary. Yeah, exactly. That's uh-huh. what I'm trying to say is that they're and what they did with the article, they've now made it so that now Orthodox people are on the yeah. outside. Even if even if you belong to an Orthodox church that has like absolutely no ties to Putin, no ties to yeah, uh, because to Russia, or, yeah, Orthodoxy is so much more like Russia is an Orthodox nation but there's serbia there's you know like we talked about antioch there's greece there's romania there's georgia like on and on there's so much more to orthodoxy and the diaspora of all those churches too that have yeah that's existed for you know hundreds sometimes multiple hundreds of years so. yeah it's almost like npr is like a hate organization I know, it's, it's really that, strange yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like um they only care about uh, the rights and privileges of the people that are on their side. It's exactly, really bizarre. and that's why you thought of doing a show called NPR Watch, where that's he's right. <laughs> that's right. I hope that you edit some big, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You heard it here first, uh, folks. Uh, soon, we we have something in the works, and uh, you know. People have asked who watches the Watchmen, but I think that what's more important is to uh, is to ask who watches NPR, and it's me. All right, uh, we're gonna have this guy on there, and we're gonna have some hard hitting yeah. uh, analysis. Someone's got to fact him. check them. Well, it, it, that's what I'm saying. And since the Ministry of Truth, uh, created by uh, Joseph Brandon, uh, has been unfortunately disbanded, you and I may have to team up and and do yeah. a little bit of. Uh, of, of truth finding and and dispelling mm-hmm. uh, and rumor. debunking debunking <laughs> yeah. debunking, uh, debunking lies yes. okay with the power of soy that goes into our next concept is how did you come to the truth because you were raised a Protestant right I was. and you had kind of a unique journey like you you know in college you kind of you know fell away weren't certain you dated a new ager you looked yeah, into yeah. islam for a while yeah. mm-hmm. but eventually you came mm-hmm. to orthodoxy so just kind of tell us that path from like protestant childhood to orthodox yeah yeah sure um without going you know too into detail um i guess i'll start off by saying that my family has that sort of american setup where you know, uh, one parent is one Protestant denomination, the other parent's another oh. Protestant denomination. Their parents sometimes kind of were different Protestant denominations. So it's like you're growing up, you know, you go to, you know, you go to Methodist church with grandma. Yeah. You know, dad occasionally still likes a Methodist church, but they found a Presbyterian church that kind of suits in the middle and, you know, and that sort of stuff. But so Presbyterian is where we landed oh, okay. uh, for, you know, like, the nuclear family yeah and um but when my parents divorced there was a good amount of time uh, that was when i was around five there was a good amount of time when we weren't really attending church um at any sort of like consistent rate oh, okay. um but by the time i was about 10 we started attending a, another presbyterian church pretty regularly and i was the i don't know i think i i felt like i was a weird kid because like I didn't want to go to the youth group and the uh, breakout sessions or whatever it is that they have for the kids. I wanted to stay there, listen to the sermon. My pastor was very um, academic, right? He yeah. liked to talk about like the sort of like historical context. Oh, of so he would talk about his history a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, was he would talk about history. Yeah. I love that because I, you know, I'm a big history fan. Um, and and he would uh, sort of give these, um, I, I wanted to call it a homily because I'm like so used to the Orthodox <laughs> yeah, language now. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, he would give a sermon. Yeah. Right? He would give a sermon uh, with something that you could, uh, you know, apply to your daily life. So uh, yeah, very, that's, that's good. I don't know. It, yeah. it was good. It was yeah. nothing and, bad, like and, wrong theology. Yeah, and didn't your pastor actually introduce you to an Orthodox priest? Yeah, yeah, yeah an Orthodox that's church. great segue. Yeah, um, kind of planted yeah, that seed. Yeah, he kind of planted the seed yeah. in, inadvertently. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and God rest his soul now, he's, he's passed, but, oh. uh, he, um, yeah, he told us all to go check out the Greek Orthodox Church that was up the street from, 
from where that church was, and um, he had developed a friendship with some of the priests up there. And uh, when I went, I was just like wowed by um, yeah. the the church and the icons and uh, yeah. the myrrh and the incense. Yeah, and, no, uh, that's like and really just like the reverence, you mm-hmm. know, the yeah. reverence, the the sort of positioning that people had, right? I yeah. I had um, I had long encountered not specifically my Protestant church, but in other ones, the sort of like. Like me, me, me. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. you know, like the Holy Spirit is filling me. Like the power of God is in me. Like I can, you know, <laughs> yeah. like uh, I can do anything with the power of God. You know? Yeah, like it's focusing on my my personal my experience. Unlimited <laughs> power. You know, like it's it's yeah. all fun, but uh, but yeah. it's that's not what it should be about. It's about yeah. humbling ourselves to God. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that that planted a seed, and from then on. How uh, how old were you when that happened? I was. I was in middle school, so middle probably school, like yeah. 13, mm-hmm. 14, something so, like that. So what happened in like high school and college? Where mm-hmm. did you kind of fall away from the faith or um, um, I started I started to um, my my interest in history took me all over the place as yeah. far as um, learning about different religions. So I, I tried to expand my worldview and uh, orthodoxy was part of that. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't know how to be orthodox, so I would sort of like play hymns and chants and stuff and like oh really yeah Yeah. and i would just like get down on my knees do the whole protestant you know yeah um with the orthodox chants yeah yeah chants in the background i think that's a good starting place like that's one of my first introductions to orthodoxy is listening to like orthodox chants and it's just like the reverence yeah i you never really got that in like protestant worship music oh and by the the worship music at uh in my church growing up you know i they did a lot of things right they did not do the worship. Music. Like, it was pretty, <laughs> yeah. it was pretty yeah. bad, even for Protestant churches. Like, oh just, gosh, yeah, it was it was hard to listen to. But yeah, uh, yeah. So I I did some of that, um, <laughs> and you know, like sort of dipped my feet in learning about Hinduism and Buddhism and uh-huh. the Eastern religions. And did you ever like take it seriously and do like yoga or anything? Or, um, or just kind of like research no, it? For, like, I a only history. did that for women. Women are the only ones <laughs> yeah. that could convince me to do yoga. You know, yeah. They're always yeah. like, oh, I want to come to the yoga class. I'm like, sure, you know, but now yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 like, <laughs> yeah. not, not so cool. But, uh, yeah, I think that at a certain point I was like, so I had in this idea in mind that there was like a perennial religion that, mm. that connected all the religions, right? Yeah. And I just sort of, I think that was like a spiritually lazy way of me being like, oh, it's all the same, and <laughs> yeah. like, you know, That's... like, it's all, like, connected, <laughs> and, like, just do your own spirituality, bro, like, it's cool, yeah. you know? That's so, like the I... American religion, just, just and that, that. Right, and yeah. that was bad, that was... Yeah, so that, that was, was in, like, college, you started to, yeah. Yeah, by the yeah. time I was in college, I, I didn't identify as a Christian anymore. Oh, right? wow. So when people would ask me, you know, I'd be like, well, you know, oh. the answer's sort of complicated, you know. Yeah. I, I thought it was, like, really deep or something. <laughs> um, but yeah. Like I, Joe I was, Rogan deep. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's, the, he's the guy that will tell you, uh, you know, that we came from monkeys that ate mushrooms, but then, well, the Bible, you know, that's, uh, 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 that's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. right. That, that yeah. guy. Um, it, he, he was part of the problem, I, I tell you. He opened my mind to a lot of good things, but, yeah. you know, but there was also some stuff just junk but yeah uh, but anyways um and so, uh when yeah, yeah to go to, to yeah. The, how in the world did i yeah like, how, becoming religious again okay yeah. how did that happen uh towards the end of my college career um mm-hmm. getting my bachelor's uh i for my thesis in history yeah i decided to write about constantine uh mm-hmm. you know the, the first yeah. emperor constantine yeah the first right? and not the 17 others that are <laughs> named after him right uh, yeah afterward but uh in that i sort of got exposed more to early church writings early church history yeah and and around that time i think that i was dealing with so much um the world had turned so far i guess you could say to the left or yeah the was this in 2020 or like no when? i mean this was more 20 I guess, yeah, 2019, 2018. Oh, okay. Sort yeah. of time. Uh, yeah, it, it just things were going so far one way that I was like, is everyone, like, blind? <laughs> Are they... Yeah. Like, I used to self-identify as a liberal. 
Yeah. Right? And I just, like, came to this point where I'm like, oh, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't, like, have children disfiguring themselves with yeah. gender reassignment surgeries. Mm-hmm. And maybe, like, it is okay to keep God in the pledge. Like, these things that are, like, I thought were... Common sense. You know, yeah. like, common sense. Yeah. Right? I was like, wow, okay, maybe... Maybe I'm, like, conservative. Maybe... Yeah. You know, I'm like, wait. And and college was just full of, there is no truth. It's all... It's all relative. It's all, you know, I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, you took philosophy classes, uh, too, right? So... Yeah, and I... Yeah. Some of them, I... You know, there were three-hour lectures that I found on YouTube that explained it better than the $1,000 course that I took for 16-plus weeks, so... I know. It's... it's uh, but, you know, yeah. I did it. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was the best. Uh... It was fine, but uh, but yeah. So during that time, I got exposed to um, more church history, mm-hmm. and I was sort of reminded of my um, my initial sort of like infatuation with yeah. orthodoxy and its aesthetic and its reverence and um, everything that came with that. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, maybe you know, going in that traditional. Yeah, you know, direction was good. And then, what got you to like go say, okay, you know what, I should go to church now. Like, yes, I see the tide is like we need conservative, we need Christian, we need Christianity in society, and I'm seeing the link between Constantine. Like, did you like maybe I should go to a Greek Orthodox church, or like what? When did that actually like? Um, when did your actions actually reflect that? Yeah, uh, after? I think that like many people that I hear about their stories like on their way to orthodoxy or even just like christianity generally um it's like they're like set up to like look 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 it's like right there you're gonna make it and then like something happens you know you just kind of like miss it you know and so i think unfortunately for me uh i had a friend uh a muslim friend that sort of like played oh yeah (laughs) gosh uh, he intercepted yeah he intercepted my my Uh, road to orthodoxy and uh he's like oh you like traditional stuff oh you (laughs) yeah you don't like feminism let me tell you something (laughs) i've got i've got something you might like yeah and i was like oh well you know this is interesting yeah and uh, the truth is and i've told you this many times cop Everything beautiful in Islam is taken from orthodoxy. Yeah. So what I saw in Islam that I liked mm-hmm. was stuff that's taken from yeah. you know, Christian orthodoxy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I did spend some time, uh, you know, studying with him. And yeah. he, he was reading the Bible. I was reading the Quran. Mm-hmm. But I think that he was not giving it the fair shake that uh. I was trying to give. The crop, Islam. yeah, right, uh-huh. yeah, and so he, um, it, it was like he went out of his way to, uh, to sort of like read the Quran into the Bible, yeah, and, and his focus, of course, was on the Old Testament because there's yeah. more parallels there. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what I've heard that Muslims do. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, the Bible is right," is so far as it agrees with the Quran, because they think anything else that doesn't agree with the Quran, it's been corrupted. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and some, well, they'll they'll tell you that the yeah the Bible's been corrupted, but then they'll lean on the Bible. Yeah, right? they'll lean. Well, 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 it says here in the Bible. I'm like, okay, but you told me that the Bible's corrupted. And they're like, yeah. Oh no no no, just the parts that don't agree. I'm like, <laughs> do you see what you're doing here? But, yeah. Anyway. So so did you ever go into like a mosque? Or, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah. I think people are kind of surprised when they hear about <laughs> that. They're like, John in the mosque. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I and I learned that. Uh, I mean, any. Any real Muslim that's like going to their mosque, they're gonna say masjid uh, oh. because that's the Arabic word, and oh, you know, okay. that's the least you could do to at least call the place where you worship the right Arabic word. Right? Yeah, because everything's in Arabic. Yeah. you know the the, the Quran, the Quran, yeah. the worship. Like Arabic, the language itself is kind of like yeah, the language what, itself yeah. is identified as you know being a holy tongue, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's a tongue prepared for the message of Allah. Yeah, right? there's something. Mm-hmm. Something to that. Yeah. Um, and this was in Texas, right? Yeah. Um, or was this... No, this was locally. Uh, oh, oh yeah. okay. Um, and then how? what finally got you out of that and then got you to liturgy? Like yeah. from Islam? Yeah, so... Because you saw he was being kind of like bad faith. Just not, totally. Yeah. Well, and, and I got to the point in my research with Islam because I, I approached it... I, I almost approached it... I wouldn't even say with an open mind. I approached it with a... Uh, you wanted to believe it? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, almost, yeah. Almost like, yeah. Yeah, almost sort of handicapping myself towards, yeah, wanting to believe it. I, I don't yeah. know, with, um, 
I don't know a good analogy for that, but yeah, no, I know what you mean because when you first get like woken up and you feel like the world is a lie, you're willing to embrace anything else that yeah, isn't. I'm like I'm ready. Yeah, like, and Islam is like the farthest I'll away. Take, I'll take that that, <laughs> yeah. that super dark red pill. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. like I'm gonna stand against this crazy world. Yeah, you know? I mean they do get a lot of things right, but ultimately, you know, the truth is what matters, and you know, truth is Christ. So, right. Yeah. So right. so what was it that well, and that's yeah. that segues to to what you were asking yeah. is that it came down to Christ that Christ yeah. was nowhere to be found in the Quran. But wait, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, actually, they mentioned Jesus. Blah, blah. Okay, I don't care how many times you mention Jesus yeah. in the Quran, right? And is what it, I, is it the same Jesus? Yeah. that we're talking about because I can't find any of the the profound sort of teaching. Right or any of the messianic symbolism, any of the prophecy fulfilled. I can't. Yeah. I, I don't find. I don't find the depth mm -hmm. of who Jesus was and is. Yeah. In it's like a Rome. severely watered down Jesus that makes no sense in the context. Like they say, oh yeah, we believe Jesus is a prophet. But it's like they don't really know anything else. But, that, he, didn't, that, but he didn't even yeah. prophesy. In yeah, the, it's like they. It's just like yeah. they say that to like appease. But then you keep asking them. That's all. They all they have is their script of like, oh, Jesus was a great prophet. Yeah. It's like, oh, why was he great? Yeah, it, it is why was he great? Script. Why was yeah. he a great prophet? They can't explain because it's just, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, they Muhammad did try his best. You know, he got, you know, he's got Sarah Miriam, which, you know, like close. Miriam is uh, oh, yeah. sister of uh, Aaron and Moses, not uh, not the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. But um, you know, but they tried. Yeah. They tried. Um, but yeah, I uh, when it the the big thing for me was Aisha, as I think. Oh for, yeah, for, for, many, for many people. That, <laughs> That's why most people leave Islam. Yeah, is learning about Muhammad's immorality. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. I think that for me. It came down to, you know, you will know them by their fruits, and you you look at the kind of man that Muhammad was, and, and I I love history. You know, I, I studied history, I continue to. People are morally, you know... Yeah. Great, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, people are not in, inherently good. I think that you and I accept the worldview that we're actually inherently yeah. fallen. Yeah, but, we're uh, in a fallen world. Yeah, yeah but... To have a man say that he is proclaiming and supporting and uh, what's the uh, Partici know, affirming? Yeah. Well, he was right. participating in. For those who don't know what Aisha was, do you want yeah. to just explain yeah, what yeah. Muhammad so, did? So, but but for a man to be affirming the same you know message as the God that you and I worship, right? Yeah. For that just doesn't coincide to me with like a six or seven year old girl. Yeah. Like, and this, yeah. from their sources, right? From the Hadith, mm -hmm. right? Like a Sunnah, Sunnah Hadith, yeah. a strong one. We're talking about a six or seven year old girl. Like, with the details, says that she brought her dolls with her. Okay? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you want to get crazier than that? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, you just, if you want to make it anachronistic, she brought her Barbies, okay? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, uh, but, you know, at least Muhammad had the decency to wait. What, uh, two years or something like that? I mean, you wait until she was nine, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, and he was 53 or yeah, something. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, this is a man who had already had his um, his uh, adopted son uh, divorce his wife so that he could fulfill his lust with his adopted son's wife. Yeah. This is, this is just a, you know, I mean, he's a, a man with a serious ego and libido mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Um, and to me, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, if you're having these prophets, and let's say Jesus comes, you know, Jesus, like, is a, they say he's a really good prophet, but I feel like it, Muhammad, if you buy into their narratives, he's like a decline because right. Jesus. He should be the pinnacle. He's yeah, yeah. The seal of the prophet. Exactly. So, how would Muhammad be the greatest prophet, even though he was very sinful, versus Jesus, even the Muslims say he didn't, he didn't do anything? So, it's just the pinnacle. That's when you, like, that would be the last. You know, Jesus is God incarnate, but um, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense on their worldview. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, and I'll I'll go back to sort of yeah. my my uh, my my story of, of getting to orthodoxy, but I'll yeah. just a last tidbit. Um, one uh, thing that stuck with me about Muhammad is uh, so what they'll tell me about uh, they denied the the crucifixion. 
Yeah. Muslims <laughs> deny the crucifixion. Mm. And um, and a lot of my dialogue that I had with the imam at the masjid that I did attend for a short time yeah. was relating to him like messianic prophecies, right? And he's mm. just like, eh, you know, I mean, if it if it works with our stuff, then it's good. If it doesn't, it's not real. Okay, <laughs> okay this is not... Yeah, I'm it's like, very... You guys know what even like a messiah is because the Quran calls him al Messiah, but uh, yeah, so but they say that he that Jesus Christ was not crucified and, yeah. and that you know God would never do this to his most beloved of prophets. He you know he, he took him up into heaven and uh, yeah, and, you know, uh, made it made it appear, yeah. <laughs> he, he switched him out, he switched yeah. him. you know. I which I, I'm not saying that God doesn't have the ability to do that, yeah, it just doesn't work theologically with the plan of salvation, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and why would he deceive everyone? Yeah, well, yeah. Allah is the greatest of deceivers. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, it, they, the lack of context, the way that yeah. it goes against history, I could go on and on. We'll visit it yeah. another time. Mm -hmm. So I had to, of course, you know, tell him respectfully, well, I disagree and I will not be joining you in the Muslim Ummah, but, uh, but around that time, I had relocated to Texas, mm -hmm. and um, a friend of mine that I met there uh, was really living his orthodoxy out loud. Yeah, really uh -huh. um, took pride in his in his orthodox faith, and um, came from a, a Catholic background, yeah. and had spent some time with Protestantism. Um, you know, a mm -hmm. wayward soul. Yeah, a strong witness. Yeah, to, yeah, the goodness, yeah. which yeah, and. Uh, yeah, so I, I connected with him. I talked to him, and um, and he just said, "Well, just come to Orthodox Bible study." I oh. went, and there was a bunch of guys drinking beers and talking <laughs> about Father Sarah from Rose, and yeah. um, having interesting yeah. conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and so I I went back, and they said, "Well, come to liturgy next." And oh. I went to liturgy, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this, this yeah. is the best!" Like, yeah. I've, I've never like I for me to be able to like make the sign of the cross and to, yeah. to prostrate, mm -hmm. you know, and to sing along, to yeah. sing along, yeah. to be part of, and, to be part of the liturgy. Yeah, you know? and it what it wasn't like the nicest church, right? It was just, oh yeah. no no yeah. Was, so was it a I, mission or was it just a smaller church? No, it was just a smaller oh, church. Okay. It was I guess what you might call like a, a seedling, you know, oh, yeah. um, a, a growing one. Uh, it's a, a road core parish. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I first started attending in summer in Texas summers, you know. Oh yeah. They they get a little get a little warm even yeah. in the morning. So sometimes, liturgy before we had AC that was you know. Oh gosh. Uh, it was it was yeah. sweaty, but you know. Yeah. I think that hopefully God, you know, he saw the sweat of our brow and, and, <laughs> yeah. and the work that we put towards you know, uh, making it a real church, which I had a very you know. Yeah. Very minute. Mm -hmm. small insignificant part in but uh no. but man it did not have an insignificant part in mm -hmm. growing me and my love for orthodoxy and preparing me for joining the church yeah which, uh which i did uh earlier this year yeah uh with your help yeah pentecost right we did yeah, yeah on Pente pentecost yeah. yep that's when i was made it <laughs> yeah. and, uh, glory to god and yeah. um yeah it's just been yeah it's been great um and the transition from a Rocor parish to uh, another Slavic parish, yeah. like uh, Serbian, a Ser yeah, Serbian we, one that yeah. we're at now, yeah. was really not hard at all. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't speak Church Slavonic or Serbian, but you know, I yeah. I know what's going on at the right times. Yeah, I say no matter what church I've been to, you know, like Greek, OCA, Serbian. At, at Jerusalem, they've all been so welcoming. Uh, like that's, I know, every, I, you know, that's anecdotal, and everyone has good and bad experiences. Yeah. But personally, everyone I've met has been, you know, super, you know, accepting and welcoming. And I, I really like. We're going to. We often talk about like you know going to like a Serbian parish, and we really like it. We like uh, Serbian culture. Uh, you said it was like kind of like we get orthodoxy plus Serbian yeah. Serbian yeah, culture. That's right. Is, is a way to think. Yeah, about yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's it's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I think at first I used to see that as a barrier, and yeah, and in some ways it still can be. Yeah, right? it's still, it still can be. It can that, be a little bit confusing. It can be. Yeah. yeah, because people and when I tell them that I go to a Serbian Orthodox church, they're like, "You're Serbian?" I'm like, <laughs> "Nope," and uh, they're like, "Okay, how do you end up there?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm 
Orthodox, you know, yeah. or, uh, or before I was Orthodox, I was a, you know, a catechumen, and before yeah. that, an inquirer, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, we have Ethiopian parishioners, we have, uh, Romanians, Romanians, yeah, we have, we have all different types of people from the Balkans, Americans, yeah, ba- Balkans, Balkans. Ba- ba- the, the Balkans yeah. getting along, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, the Balkans getting along, <laughs> yeah. who would have figured, yeah. uh, Asians, yeah, yeah, yeah Asian yeah. people, um, yeah, I, yeah, just, and, and it's been re- it's been really growing at like on at least from our experience like we've seen a bunch especially y- young guys yeah um, especially come... yeah strong contingent of young guys I'll yeah. say that uh, it was funny when I most recently went back to Texas the guys asked about the the young lady contingent <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> yeah, at yeah, parish, and I was like well um, we could use some strengthening yeah you know um, mm-hmm. so hopefully. I, I don't know if it's just where we're at geographically, but um, yeah. in Texas, it was fairly represented, like, 50-50. Like, there yeah. was a lot of young ladies um, coming from Christian and non-Christian backgrounds that have come to the church. So, yeah. glory to God for that. Mm-hmm. Was there any, like, theological problems you ran into? like, Or mm-hmm. was it, like, you know, like, maybe, like, asking for the intercessory prayers of a saint or, like, venerating, an, or venerating an icon? Or was it kind of like, oh, no, I just looked at the history and this church has an authority. That's kind of what it was for me. Like, um, sure. I, you know, going from like atheist to Catholic, I saw the authority, but then look, look, you know, keeping looking back of like, it also matters the continuity of the prior teaching, which led me to orthodoxy. So yeah, what led, like, was there any barrier from the Protestant? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I think that the dogma that I got as a kid, you know, it sticks hard, right? I yeah. Mean, I had the Ten Commandments hung up in my home until I was maybe you know, like 14-ish or, or so, and, um, you know, like, don't, don't make images of God, right? <laughs> that's, like, yeah. a pretty, it's yeah. a big one. That's, yeah. So I was like, well, I don't want to do that and, yeah. and get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, but the answers that I've received from not only writings, but then just uh, talking to Different priests, yeah. Because um, I always love to wherever I'm at, just field questions to them when I can. Um, I've always been satisfied with the answers, and yeah. I've always been able to to back mm-hmm. the explanations. One with scripture, and then two with the holy writings, tradition and the, the holy tradition, tradition and, and, the, and the ecumenical yeah, councils. But they they specific, councils, yeah, uh, writings of the fathers. Just you know, there's they they have the backup, right? And I'm I'm like. I consider myself like an amateur historian, right? Yeah. So I can I can always you know sort of check on these things a little bit, you know. Yeah. But mm. but really, what you were getting at with like you know the church has the authority, right? Mm, yeah. That's that's the biggest part is accepting that authority is to yeah is to really to humble oneself because I mm. coming from Protestantism, there's a lot of well I interpret the Bible as <laughs> yeah. Well, the, what, what the Lord is saying to me, or you know, the Holy Spirit has convicted me of. Yeah. And, I, and then, I, my, and then for it, me, I, I don't even want to invite the possibility of like other spirits. Yeah. Or other a Pentecostal things. spirit. Yeah. yeah take, I, like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to start flopping like a fish. I don't. I don't want to invite yeah. those things. You yeah. Know? I'd rather. And that's what I'd rather or, lean on the Holy Tradition. Yeah. Lean on the Church. To, to have a better connection with my Lord and Savior. Yeah. Right? That's what orthodoxy, like, strike me as so different, is it's, like, so, like, anti prelast Like, I've never even heard about that in, like, Catholicism or, you know, just yeah. Christianity in general. Like, they never talk about pre They kind of just affirm whatever experience you have. Oh, that must be God. But in orthodoxy, it is very skeptical of everything. It's like, no, you should be going to confession more. You should be, you know, receiving communion. Like, you're not supposed to just blindly follow your spiritual experiences. That's what... You know, uh, all the church fathers have talked about. You know, we should have the same experience of God. Um, you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, no, yeah. I, I just, I agree with you that I, yeah. I think I had never heard so much skepticism. Yeah, so much dream. skepticism from. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, my most uh, recent dating relationship that didn't work out. You know, yeah, I, I had these dreams, and I was telling my brothers back in Texas, <laughs> oh, and they're like, Satan. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, and I should have listened. To them. Yeah, Wait, you know what I mean. Your like, Orthodox friends? Yeah, they're Orthodox oh, okay. friends. Yeah, yeah. they're just like, it, mm, I yeah. don't know about this dream. Is, yeah, I, I don't think it's telling yeah. you to date that girl. I think, I think that's yeah. 
Yeah. So we've kind of talked about this, but our brains, we think of them, they're kind of like receptors. And if you know, if you're just tuning to random like channels, yeah. like with your... You, you might pick up some weird signals. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like if you're doing like acid or LSD or you're just even, <clears throat> even something just like a dream. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's not that dreams are inherently bad. It's just, yeah. you don't right. know... Like you know, uh, Joseph, you know, I mean, he, he had gift of actual, like, prophecy dreams, right? Yeah, like, exactly. And Daniel, uh, you know, these things, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's not exclusive, they're like, they're always bad, they're always bad. Yeah. It's just that you, you gotta don't be have that gift. Yeah. Right? And, and who has that gift except but the most holy and pious of men? Like, I'm yeah. not, I don't have access to that gift, you know, like, perhaps, yeah. you know, one day, uh, maybe a smidge, right? But, like... No, not right now. So yeah. I, I should be very suspect of my dreams. Yeah. Right? And just like, f not like fantasy in general, not like just like, and there's a difference between like just fantasizing and like actually being like contemplative. You know, when I talk about fantasy, like that's helped me, like since becoming Orthodox, is not just giving into fantasy, not just spending so t much time thinking about thoughts. And you're just wasting a lot of your time and it can create a lot of anxiety when you're thinking about the future and it ca can cause depression if you think too much about of the past. But in orthodoxy, to me, it's really about being in the present moment. And that's what I think is something like the Jesus prayer. You're really just present in that moment doing that prayer. Um, well said. Yeah. So is there, is there any tips or like, you know, just like little things that kind of like... Oh, you're tips. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> open to receiving them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, or like any like... I, go yeah, on, go any on. little things you've grown to appreciate in orthodoxy that, you know, because I... There's a lot, like there is oral tradition, and we have like a really good catechism class, I think, at our church, yeah. and we learn just so many little details. So like, is there any like tips or um, little details? Well, I think you just hit on a huge yeah. one, is like find a good catechism class. Yeah. Like even, even if your parish doesn't run one, like I believe that there are online ones that you can yeah. attend. Um, mm -hmm. I, forgive me, I don't have that you know info ready, like, oh, go to blah, 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 they'll, yeah. they'll say, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can re look into it, but I, yeah. If you can't find one locally, then definitely yeah. try and find some stuff online for catechism class. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, so like, I had already been attending liturgies by the time that I found uh, Jade Dyer's channel. Oh yeah. Um, but, and, and his stuff is fascinating. Yeah. Right? Like it's really great, and mm. you know I, I tune in. Um, yeah. But it's also can be like super overwhelming. Yeah. And it's also... Uh, That's why it's, like, online orthodoxy, there are some really good parts, like, spreading awareness and learning about, like, really deep things, but also, like, going to, to liturgy is really important. And I'd yeah, say, that's the yeah, that's, just go to liturgy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, you know what? That's the tip that I have <laughs> yeah. for everyone, is just go to yeah, liturgy. Yeah, just go to liturgy. Go, go to liturgy, and if you're orthodox and you can receive communion, go to confession and yeah. receive the communion. Yeah. So that's, go as much as possible. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, our our priest, one of our priests, tells us almost constantly to receive yeah. the body and blood of Christ as as much as possible. Right? Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what's going to bring yeah. healing to soul and body. Yeah. Another thing that really stuck out to me when becoming Orthodox was just like how community centered it is, since you only normally have like one liturgy, and you know, like most churches have like a coffee hour to, or. Uh, lunch after I feel that's really important is having that community um, and having that you know having friends at your church like it really does make a difference like our priest says all the time that you know we're he's we're helping him get to heaven and he's helping us get to heaven like it's a mutual thing and that's what so really like get involved in your local church um, our friend has started a book club at our church you can start something like that but really like stick stick around um, you know with the people and actually like, don't just make it a Sunday thing. Like, really, you know, like, we've been doing a lot of hikes and been, you know, trying to visit monasteries. Um, but, yeah, really get some, like, I don't know, find a good group of people. I really do think that makes a difference. Like, I think it's yeah. really enhanced my experience having, you know, so many, like, like-minded people that you can, you know, grow together, especially since there's a lot more converts. Yeah. Um, coming to yeah. I, my experience here as well as uh, before I moved back from Texas when, when I was there uh, yeah, the, the community is the, the huge aspect. Um, you you see in the coffee hour, right? Yeah. And you get to sort of, you know, chat with people and uh, meet their children and, uh, you know, 
hear their story and mm -hmm. you know you can bring some food I yeah mean, i love to bring yeah. a little food mm -hmm. and everybody brings a little different yeah. thing and Start, Actually, yeah, we do, we've been starting potlucks too at our right. church. That's really good. That way you get to experience like really good food that everyone makes because everyone's good at making some food. Yeah, and, <laughs> and usually since even the you know ethnic churches a lot of times have like ethnic plurality like our own. Yeah, um, where you're gonna end up you know with Norwegian pudding and <laughs> and then yeah. like tacos. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it, yeah. You're just, you're going to get a great... Yeah. Plethora. And Texas barbecue. Yeah, and Texas, right. There's, <laughs> yeah, yeah and there's definitely, there's, yep, yeah. there's Texas barbecue yeah. involved as well. Um, but, but yeah, beyond that, yeah, just having people to do things like outside of church. Yeah, right? that's like, really important. It's cool, it's cool to like, um, to get together with guys and we can like all stand in front of some icons and do some prayers and then we like you know I don't know we like have coffee or dinner yeah or we watch a movie yeah or we like you know, it's like school like you have school friends but you need it like it's it's so much better if you actually have those you hang out with those school friends outside of church it's the same way don't don't just have like church friends like really you know it's nice to make like really good connections with you know the people at your church well I, and so my thing I would also say is that I never felt pressure like piety pressure yeah that no i never yeah, yeah i and that was something that i had felt sometimes in protestant groups you know um that mm -hmm. which had even kept me away from certain things in protestant churches that i was a part of in the past was you know just feeling like well, are they gonna like scrutinize me am i gonna end up saying that i like something that's maybe you know, yeah or, or you know like oh wow you have experience with that like you yeah. The God, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever it is, right? right? I, um, yeah. So I never felt that, um, and I think yeah. that, you know, that's gonna come down to like individual experience, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. But yeah, that's been that's been a huge, a huge plus. Yeah. Well, I just if you are living an orthodox life, it should be like I am first among sinners. Like humility is like yeah. the, that is what makes a saint. And like I, I I don't know my experience with Protestantism. It never was about like humility. It was just kind of about your like self and your. Um, and then that's why you get so many My strip journey. Yeah, that's why you get so many strip mall churches. It's like now I'm the guru because I figured it out, and yeah. they get to open up their you know new cult church. But yeah, it took. I mean, look, it's uh, Jesus tried to put out the message that they immediately messed it up, I guess, and then two thousand years later we got strip mall guy. Figured it out. He figured it out. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. No, I Jesus rose him up. Yeah, I yeah, I I'll just say that uh I had a brief experience going to a health and wealth prosperity gospel church oh, no. with a buddy. Uh yeah. Yeah, and that wow man, like it is it is terrible to see how people can be deceived. It's yeah. like they're it's like they're led like right up to the truth, you know, and they're just, you know, they're snatched away right before they, yeah, they hit right there. But uh, mm -hmm. anyways, so, yeah. Moving so, on. what do you think about the futures of like orthodoxy, especially in America? You know, I was looking at the charts. Actually, orthodox America has actually it's like seven million orthodox Christians, and actually puts it up there with I think it's like top five. Um, so. How much do you see this growing? Are we, are we like just behind the Sikhism or? Oh, I oh I meant um like or like you know Russia has so many Orthodox Christians. Oh. Serbia, like Serbia only has like. Oh, you mean most Orthodox yeah, yeah, people? Yeah, like probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah like okay. Serbia only has like six million people, I think. It was so seven million people. Like, Man. there's a lot. Like maybe not, of, maybe yeah. not percentage wise, right? Like no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah the, population. Yeah. But I see that growing a lot. Like I think right now we're about one percent, one to two percent of the population. I mean, I personally, by the time I die, let's say like twenty twenty eighty five, sure, um, I could see it being Global. like t like t at least like ten percent of the population in America. Or what do you think? Like, I mean, do you think I, I would love that, to see it. I think yeah. that um, you know, if we're to go with what Father Sarah from Rose says. Um, and that it's much later than you think, um, then we should definitely go into overdrive. Yeah. As far as getting, yeah. getting people into the into the true church, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I, I don't know, it, it could be, you have to always think, 
right? Mm-hmm. You have to always be in the mindset of like that the harvest is coming. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, all I can do is pray, right? All I can do yeah, is, that's all we can do is, is, is do focus it. on our job, not, yeah, mm-hmm. just focus on your local parish. That's how you make a difference is focus on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to lose yourself. Yeah. In, you I, don't, you don't need to convert everyone. It's really, yeah. it is a communal like way, but I think. You know, in the past, orthodoxy, all the translations were in English. There's a lot of barriers, but now a lot of those barriers are getting removed. And they continue to come down. They, they continue. All these things are being translated, more awareness. I mean, we saw Josiah Tremon on Tucker Carlson. And next, I want to talk about Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is a very... Oh. I, <laughs> he's, he's a, he is a strong cultural figure. You know, yeah. I'm... Um, but, yeah, I mean, I got enamored a little bit with um, <laughs> yeah. the JPB. Or yeah. J J B P. Yeah. J B P. So, do you think he will convert to orthodoxy? What do you think? Um. Well, I don't know. He might make a stop at uh, Islam at some point because <laughs> I've noticed that he's had Muhammad hijab and oh, a yeah. couple other uh, really disgusting sort of um, uh, hateful uh, Muslim apologists on, and I wish that he would have. Somebody more like a Shabir Ali or, or somebody <laughs> yeah. a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't know, um, maybe they don't want to uh, rape and kill Christians, right? Did, is Muhammad in hijab? Uh, oh, Did he say I, something close to that? These guys, yeah, they... I know Shabir Ali, he seems like a, guy, a really uh, nice guy. They're, they're like right. Salafis. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are the Salafis. really... Those are like the really Yeah, extremist. really, yeah, fundamentalist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, like bring back the caliphate kind of type, type oh, people, you know. And, yeah. you know, I mean, that's a whole other debate with the uh, yeah. Hadith and... and yes. Yeah. Because in Islam, it's not just, there's not just one Islam. I mean, there's okay. there's Sunni, there's yeah. Shia, there, and then within those, there's, like you're talking about, there's all the different... Yeah, I, I think that... So I'll just say that for me, I've just been, like, really disappointed in his sort of lack of academic inquisitiveness or rigor in his research about Islam I think I don't know if it's like he researches Islam and then he like sort of like shies away from the hard questions yeah or if he sort of is being lazy in his research with Islam and then he's just sort of having these people on to Mm. uh, you know grow his audience yeah I mean who doesn't doesn't like to make money yeah yeah. I mean I obviously his sort of like conservative-ish uh, outlook on things and, and uh, method is gonna ring true with a lot of Muslims and yeah. certainly with like a lot of diaspora Muslims that live in like the Western world. Yeah, um, it, yeah kind so of, I, it kind of validates them too when they see like someone like Andrew Tate or Jordan Peterson, you know, converts to Islam. It's like wow, Islam is true. Everyone kind of gives this perception that it's you know, it's more true just because of these, these, uh... Their iman has been incre- increased. Yeah. Iman is, uh, it's like a concept of, like, their, their belief is, you know, like, oh, now that I've seen this, like, my iman, <laughs> like, my iman level is... Your power level? Yeah, power level? Oh, gosh. Is it yeah. like Dragon Ball? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, I... It, Wait, it, would, it would go over 9,000. Now <laughs> that they have Andrew Tate, like, it's close, but I think if they got Jordan, yeah. it'd be, it'd be over 9,000. Um... But do I see Jordan Peterson? I I actually don't. I really don't. Yeah. I don't see. Do you think he's just gonna kind of stay in this middle? Like he won't commit to anything, or do you think he's actually? Yeah. Won't no. I I think that yeah. he's somewhat similar to like a twenty year old me, and that he. Yeah. Has, I was about like, to say he's kind of esoteric. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Well, in the symbolisms of meaning and blah blah blah. Like yeah. yeah there's. The thing is, is that... And he can make more money that way, because if you kind of like, if you kind of, oh, I'm going to dabble in a little bit of Islam, I'm going to dabble a little orthodoxy, Catholicism, then you get all their audiences, but you, you know, but you're not actually committing. I don't think anybody converted to orthodoxy since, uh, for money, right? Yeah. For, for like money, monetary purposes since probably, you know, like 1,000 AD or (laughs) something, you know? Or, or social purposes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And and I'm sure that's more likely, but, uh. No, I. He sees he sees the icons and and the and the liturgy and all that sort of stuff is all you know. It, it's all representative of blah 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 the universal truth that isn't really universal because you can't ground it in anything objective other other than to say it's tradition. <laughs> Why, dang it, it's gonna stay that way. You know, like I, it, he won't. 
he's more wishy washy than these wishy washy people that he will yeah. that he will uh, you know call out and own oh, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, so I'm yeah. I'm he's, I'm kind of over. It. Look, if God can bring a sinner like me to the true church, then He can bring Jordan Peterson. So uh, I, here's hoping. Yeah. Here's hope. Oh, maybe at some point he'll be uh, one of the guests on this podcast. <laughs> I, I on the ortho cast yeah. yeah the ortho cast with Joe Rogan too can you oh, imagine Joe Rogan. we finally get Joe Rogan off of I, his uh, mushroom ape theory yeah, yeah. get him get yeah. him talking to Jay or something he should, he should have uh, David Patrick Henry on because he he that he kind of looked into that before going into uh, before becoming orthodox like the mushroom theory and everything I think if Joe Rogan just had like Jay Dyer on like it would be a really it'd be an interesting show yeah, no, it, it would if he if he had people that were not uh, Hollywood whack jobs, yeah. you know, on his on his podcast or his jujitsu buddies. Like if he just sort of like you know, yeah, reached out a little bit more. Yeah, and you do jujitsu, right? Are, uh, I, I not like, currently, not, not currently. currently. Oh, I have okay. a a background in mostly karate, but I also know some Japanese jujitsu. Um, yeah. But that that also got me plugged into <laughs> Joe Rogan as a kid. Oh, yeah. Was you know I'm like oh I love fights and and being like libertarian and like, <laughs> yeah I can do whatever I want yeah. And that is the end of the first episode of the Orthocast. Thank you, John, for being on. Comment if you want to see John again. If you want us to talk about any more topics, I mean I'd like to have him as a reoccurring guest. <laughs> And um, you know, I hope talk about his like uh, NPR watch. Yeah, show yeah. Well, def- I'll stuff. definitely have to come think... back, whether you guys like it or not. Yeah. For uh, for the launch of NPR watch. Yeah. So be on the watch for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, comment topics you want to ta- us to talk about next, and comment if um, who you want on next. I want to have a lot of people on, or what topics you want to talk about. Comment if you want to be on. You know, what I want to do is kind of build like an archive. For a lot, with a lot of testimonies of converts to orthodoxy, um, and then also just talk talk about kind of just topics that you know we'd all be interested. In. So I hope you like it. Thank you. God bless.